Well, hello. So we are back up at the church because guess what? This spring I planted a planter and a lot of you have been asking me almost daily about updates. And I wanted to make sure we gave it long enough to see how it was really going to do in the elements. So we've had hardly any rain, but we've had hot, dry summer. We've had lots of wind. It's been, I'm going to say close to two months now, month and a half, two months. But um, if you look at the before, when I just planted this to now, there's major changes. So this is what you want to see in a planter. And what I love about this is all of it has really started to flourish. And grandma, of course, has said that she loves it, but she wanted me to check on it too and asked if I could come up and see if I think anything needs to be done to it. So the one thing is you can see these salvia in here. When they start getting, you know, their flowers are really kind of unique. And when they get done, if you look closely, they get empty shells. And then these try to go to a seed head, which can really start taking some energy away from the plant. So you can actually go in on certain flowers like this. And most flowers that are annuals really benefit from this, just deadheading them. So taking off those spent blooms and just removing them. So what I'm gonna do is kind of clean it up a little bit. So taking off these spent blooms is really gonna help the flower put energy into the blooms that are still coming. Like see how this new one is coming? So when you go in and you deadhead, which I know all of you know this, when you go in and deadhead an annual, it promotes new fresh blooms. Pruning promotes growth. So when you're pruning something, even like the dead flowers, you're promoting that new fresh growth. So what I also really wanted to come in and look at was Grandma was worried some of the things were overgrowing other things, which I knew would happen because plants compete. They can overgrow each other. So if we look in here, you can see the artemisia is really starting to cover like the lemon coral. Personally, I don't mind that too much because either way, I want these flowers to keep overflowing like they are. But I am going to come in and selectively prune out some. So sometimes when annuals like this grow, you don't know the rates that they're going to grow. So sometimes they do, they overtake. But you can go in and prune back some of the growth to start making sure that more light is coming into like this lemon coral. So it just promotes it to want to push out more and be able to grow. But look how healthy everything is, you guys. This to me is the exciting part, is when you really start noticing something filling in. So we have the Artemisia. We have some wonderful licorice plant here, Heliochrysum. We have, of course, the hybrid Salvia, which I love the darker tones. And I love these beautiful flowers and the blooms and how they play so well all together and I love the height we're getting out of this so we have the height here we have then low spreading out but then we also have these flowers that are really intermixing so what I'm doing is just going around and checking if I want to kind of just cut off anything else so it's more just to kind of promote that light and that sunlight to get to certain other plants just as well which you can see the vigorous grower here is the artemisia Artemisia can be a perennial, and then there's annual versions. This is an annual one, and I love how dense and thick it really is. And it's really starting to come out, but I wanna make sure that it doesn't just choke out other plants. So I'm just gonna go around, prune a few more, and I'll be done. So you can see now, what I've done is really trimmed off a lot of this Artemisia. So the lemon coral can really now be opened up. The light will get to it. Hopefully it will start growing out a little bit more. You know, it's just one of those things where you have to kind of play the game of what's going to grow quicker, where is it going to go over, and that's what I lo really love about it. So as a recap, the things I've planted here, the coffee cups, they are beautiful. You know, I love elephant ear anyway, but these are ones that can take sun, really good amount of sun. They have that deep, dark color. They work really well with the unplugged pink salvia. It's a hybrid salvia that I've trimmed off and used all the spent blooms I've taken off so it can push out these new blooms, which they're a really unique bloom, but they're still showy and that's what I like. We have, of course, licorice plant or heliochrysum right there. Kind of that traditional one that you see a lot of places, but it's sturdy and it flows out. The silver bullet artemisia always gorgeous and it is that to me is really the star here because it has really done well in the heat and then the lemon coral sedum which is what i've trimmed around to make sure and promote some new growth coming out of it which when you look all over this has done exactly what i hoped it would it has really filled in it's coming out over the edges and it's showy but in an understated way it's not flashy but it works really well with making sure it holds up to the heat to the wind from the southern exposure it gets here and to everything else so this is the update you've been asking for. It looks really good. Maybe I'll do one towards the end of summer so you can see how it weathered throughout the summer. All right, so we're going on a little field trip and just touring different containers right now that I love that I put together this spring. This one is at my mom's and I have two of these in front of the front porch. They flank both sides, but look at this color. These are heart to heart, hot to trot, caladium from Proven Winners and I'm absolutely 
obsessed with them. Usually I don't do a lot of caladium. What's great about these is they can take a good amount of sun. They can take some shade. This is the north side, but in the evening it gets some good bright sun almost and it gets shade during the day. Guess what? They're loving it. What I like is I plant them as bulbs late spring. They have just ballooned into this beautiful foliage. It has so much color. They do actually get some blooms that are going to bloom. They're a little bit more inconspicuous, but the color is what you're after, which against mom's white house looks so good. I have bridal veil in front. I did have Helia Kristen that is planted in the back. Honestly, it's getting overshadowed by all this other stuff, and that's what I love. There's a lot of different textures of green here. We have the Japanese all gold forest grass down there in front. These bobo hydrangeas are just about to bloom in the next couple weeks. We have lots of boxwoods, so during the winter there's something here. So this bright spot of color is really fun. You notice it from the road. Yeah, you hear the road. That's what's fun though, is you really notice these when you drive by or when you pull in the driveway, and that's what I really love. So one of my favorites, let's go check one I did in the spring with you guys on a video in the backyard that I think looks pretty good. So in the backyard, you may remember I have a long flower bed at mom's that I've kind of been slowly adding perennials to, and it's a work in process. I have more perennials to add. I want to add some Walker's Low Cat Mint, actually, which I think will be nice in between all the Ansonia. But the, I mean, the Culver's root right now is blooming. How fun is that? I just planted this last year, so look how it gets so much bigger every year. I have the Sun King Aurelia right beside it, which again, eventually those will get three, four foot plus high. They get really tall and big, they're beautiful. And then I have the Firelight Hydrangeas, which are just about to open up. They're in their second year here, so they're actually starting to really get some size on them too. And you know, it's all these things that I love, and slowly we're getting to the container I put in. So we put this in together, and when I say we, I mean you and me. Uh, we put it in, it's probably been, it's been longer than I think, it's July. So this was go went in sometime in May. And what I love is it has, again, a lot of texture down below. So I have the lemon coral sedum, one of my favorites for full sun that takes a lot of heat and sun. And that's what this gets right here. And so this is starting to really mound up and soon it will be falling over the top. Isn't this beautiful? This is beautiful. I just, I love this. So this is Purple Lady. It's one of my favorite things because it has such a beautiful texture to it. It's Irisine. And what I like is it has just that quality where it really falls over. Now what you're going to notice is this one and the back one are much bigger. This one had to be replaced for some unknown reason. It, um, it fell short and didn't make it, I don't know, I think a couple weeks maybe after it was planted. And uh, now it's catching up and they're doing well. Obviously, there's a beautiful, isn't this beautiful? It's a beautiful elephant ear here in the middle. Again, I, what I love is this can take full sun, which oftentimes it can be hard to find things for full sun that love the heat that we get here in Iowa. All of these things are working together to do really well. And what I like is this elephant ear, you can see has a nice purple stem to it and the purple veining underneath. That really picks up from the purple lady here, and then it really sets off against that lemon coral. Now, of course, you always ask me, this isn't a cast iron urn, an antique urn. Um, all of my urns, anything I use outside, inside, it has drainage. I always get asked, wait, these don't usually drain. All of mine do drain, and I make sure I won't put anything outside if it doesn't drain. While in the summer we get really dry, if it rains, things like this would get inundated with water, and I definitely don't want them to sit in water, because nothing wants to just sit in water unless it's a water plant, so that's different. But you know, all of these definitely want good drainage, and you can see here on this elephant ear, it takes them a little bit to get started, but look, it has now a small one beside it that will get going, and what they do is they send out their leaves from the center. So you can see all these leaves keep coming out, so soon along here you can see the slight ridge in this rib, this will be another leaf popping out here soon, and they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. By the end of summer, I can't wait to see how big this gets. Knowing me, I'm probably going to try to save it over the winter. I don't know. I try to save way too many plants because it's like, why not? But uh, this is just, this has become one of my favorites. It did have, I will admit, a couple Hellier Chris, and we planted in here too. They got just kind of overshadowed and overtaken by everything else, and I'm okay with that. I like to overfill a planter sometimes in what it is just, you know what, whatever fights to get the best is what wins, and this is winning, and it's looking really good. I even love how the purple is coming over that lemon coral and really starting to develop it. So this is an update on three different containers at three different areas, kind of. One at the church that I planted for grandma, uh, two here at my mom's, which is just the beginning of hopefully some container updates I'll be giving you. I, I like to give updates because it's good to see 
hey, we plant these things, what happens to them later on? And so that's what this is all about. And you can see now how things progress and how things grow. We're in July, they're growing, they're doing well. I have more watering to do, I have Kip to get home, I have dinner to make. You know, there's always things to do in the garden and it's always fun to bring you along. So thanks for always watching, thanks for sharing these videos, coming along on my gardening adventure because that's what it's all about. And until next time, do something fun in the garden. That's what it's all about. <laughs>